We begin with a Fox News alert. The U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv is temporarily suspending routine visas due to the violence in the Middle East. Right now, Israeli troops are patrolling the West Bank as protesters are setting fires. Overnight, 11 people were shot and killed by Israeli troops after clashes turned violent. Meanwhile, Israel strikes back after Hamas launches more than 200 rockets. At least nine people have died in Israel and more than 130 in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vows to crush Hamas with unrelenting bombardments as the Times of Israel reports a ceasefire could be coming as diplomatic efforts continue. Welcome to Fox and Friends in this 8 o'clock Eastern Time hour. And we're going to start this hour off big with our next guest, Mike Pompeo, Fox News contributor and former Secretary of State. Sir, thank you, sir. There we go. I'll look at the right camera now. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. We've, it's a new set. We're getting used to it. Come on. Uh, and you're, you're, you're fitting in nicely to the Fox family. Great to have you. Uh, when you look at what's Dave, happening in Israel, uh, Mr. Secretary, you've, you've spent a lot of time there. You know that situation intimately, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, all the factors. Where are we now as it pertains to the security of Israel? Well, Pete, I did spend a lot of time there. They were an important friend and ally in, in the Trump administration. We always had Israel's back. They knew that. And our adversaries knew that, too. The Iranians, Hamas terrorists, the Palestinian and Islamic Jihad terrorists, those folks who were firing these missiles, killing innocent civilians in Israel, they, they knew that the United States understood that Israel had not only the right but the obligation to defend itself and protect its people. What's happening is tragic. Every life that's lost, whether it's in Gaza or the West Bank or inside of Israel is of value, but these terrorists have to stop what they're doing. Israel has every right to defend itself. And don't forget, Pete, the, the weapon systems that are being fired, the capabilities that these terrorists have in Gaza Strip are coming directly from support from the Islamic mm -hmm. Republic of Iran. And the United States is sitting at the table in Vienna today, plotting to hand over billions of dollars to that very Iranian regime that's now killing innocent Israeli civilians. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, you know, before this segment, I checked the U.S. State Department website, and it still says that Israel has no greater ally than the United States. But President Biden gave $100 million to the Palestinians. So why would the U.S. government give money to Palestine if they're launching rockets, rockets at our allies? Carly, it's uh, unexplainable. It's a total, total head scratcher. Uh, I've seen that, too. I've seen that statement. And frankly, Secretary Blinken's statements with respect to this have been pretty good, too. He said that the Israelis have the right to defend themselves. But you can see in the Democrat Party, there are many who yes. are attacking Israel or calling Israel terrorists. They're coming after those who say that the Israelis have the right to defend themselves. Uh, I hope that President Biden will give an even stronger signal. Remember, none of this happened in the Trump administration. Uh, th these hundreds of rockets that are coming out of Gaza w would not have happened but for the absence of deterrence, but for the understanding of the Iranians that uh, we're going to continue to underwrite. Your point about the Palestinians, we're giving them $100 million to conduct pay for slay. They're paying martyrs that kill Israelis now. They have more money. It's all fungible. It can go for school in the West Bank or it can go for a rocket to land in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. this, this is tragic. The United States policy uh, can't be pro-Iranian. It can't be pro-terrorist. And we need to make sure that everyone is clear that we're not going to provide resources to those who want to undermine this historic Jewish homeland in Israel. Mr. Secretary, I was having a conversation with someone the other day. They said, well, where do these rockets come from? How do the Palestinians get all these rockets? So I'm so glad you clarified exactly where the support for these kinds of attacks originates. And let me let me ask you about that sort of power behind the throne when it comes to something else as well. The attack on American security this past week as we saw Russian hackers, Darkside, the name of the hacking group, who hacked into the colonial pipeline, true infrastructure here in the United States of America. Now, Joe Biden has said that Vladimir Putin and the Russian government are not behind this kind of attack. But where is the power behind the throne there? There have been those that suggest nothing happens in Russia without at least oversight or knowledge from the Russian government. Can we dismiss the involvement of the Russian government in this kind of hack? Well, I haven't seen the intelligence. Maybe they have that kind of certainty that the leadership inside of Russia didn't know. But your point's well taken. Uh, very little happens there that is not at least tacitly supported, whether they approve this particular operation at night. The, the Russians could easily know where these operators hacked the United States. This was, this was something that threatened the United States of America. We have people standing in gas lines. We have uh, risk that our infrastructure, more broadly even than these pipelines, 
could come under attack. This is a hit on the American economy, and it's coming from a foreign soil. There should be every expectation that the leadership in the home country of this, and it appears that it's Russia, that the leadership in Russia will hold accountable these actors, and if they don't do it, the United States has a responsibility to take them on directly and make sure that something like this never happens again. The fact that we paid ransom was noted. It was noted by terrorists all around the world, I assure you. And whether it was $5 million this time, it'll be $50 million next time, the price for paying ransom increases. Appeasement mm -hmm. always increases threats, and I'm afraid that's what's happened in this situation as well. Mr. Secretary, what is the uh, proportional response or the deterrence? Uh, you've got a virus that, that uh, as we learn more and more, you know, appears to have escaped uh, from a Chinese lab. You have things like this that may be tied to the Russian government. Just, in, just in, let's say that they are. Let's say it was the Russian government tied in. How do we respond in a world of cyber attacks, which can kill Americans, cripple our economy? We have a very vulnerable grid sure. and infrastructure. Sure. What does a response look like that deters bad actors who, who can do bad things with the click of a mouse? No, Pete, you, you nailed it. Th this is life-threatening. This is th this may not be kinetic in the traditional sense that you and I know, right? As as veterans, mm -hmm. th th this is not that. But the the risk to life, the risk to life of Americans is very real, and it's cheap. It's cheap for adversaries to use these cyber tools. So, lots of ways to respond. One is responding kind in the cyberspace. We know how to do that. Our our forces are very capable of executing that kind of counter attack and imposing real costs. But bigger picture, think you you mentioned the Wuhan virus. Think about this. The Chinese Communist Party covered up a virus. They knew that they had it. There was human-to-human -human transmission. It may well have leaked from one of their laboratories. We still don't know the answer to that. The world must unite imposed real costs. Imagine things like kicking them out of important institutions that matter to them, putting tariffs on their products, sanctioning senior leaders, not letting them travel. You can imagine dozens of actions that the world could take to impose real costs on the Chinese Communist Party until they ha help us understand how millions of people around the world died as a result of a virus that escaped from their country. Yeah, well, from one crisis to another, and we're talking about the border crisis now, uh, there are some really disturbing pictures uh, that have come out, and it shows you know, two small children among a, a group of about 20 migrants, and they were being smuggled in a sealed truck bed, cargo trailer, seal, sealed with plastic. Um, and there's also this a New York Times report that President Biden has lashed out at HHS Secretary uh, Secretary Javier Becerra during an Oval Office meeting. So, um, what does that New York Times report say to you? Because the messaging, the public messaging, is that this is not a crisis. We have everything under control. Uh, but when you look at those images and hear about this report, that there could be some friction within the Biden administration on this. What does that say to you? Carly, President Biden's in charge, so he can holler at whoever he wants. He can get frustrated whoever he'd like to get frustrated with. In the end, these are the Biden administration's policies that have caused this human tragedy, this crisis on our southern border. The, the darndest thing about this one, unlike some of the others, uh, this one was man-made. We, we, we had this problem. We worked on it for two and a half years. We had figured out a solution. We had diplomatic arrangements with the Mexican government, with the governments in Central America that had created a stable situation on our southern border. And they walked in and they said, Trump, Pompeo, their team did this. We're just going to flip the switch and undo it. And you can see these pictures are so hard to watch. Uh, the risk to our southern border from fentanyl coming across, from cartels moving their way into our nation. These are real risks. The southern border is important to secure. American sovereignty is central to secure. It's so frustrating to hear the Biden administration now fighting with each other when, in fact, we ought to be addressing this crisis on our southern border. And you point out correctly that Joe Biden ultimately is in charge, but he has attempted to delegate these responsibilities to his vice president, Kamala Harris. Let's take a look at this L.A. Times headline, by the way. It says Republicans aren't alone in saying Kamala Harris should visit the southern border. Uh, Mr. Secretary, what's going on here? Is this... It's hard not to look at this and say there's an attempt inside the Biden administration to offload this bad press onto someone. Maybe Biden shifting it to Harris, maybe Harris saying, I don't want it. Whatever it is, everyone in the administration is running away from this issue. That's sure, that's sure what it looks like. It looks like people trying to point to the other guy and throw him under the bus. It's, uh, that's really bad leadership. In the, in the end, in the end, this comes from the top. In the end, if, if you give a directive to your vice president, your vice president has the, uh, the obligation to execute it. That was true in the Trump administration. If the president said, Mike, this is, this is your mission set, I, I had every single focus to make sure that we delivered on behalf of America and the United States. Uh, to, watch, to watch a bit of a Keystone Cops exercise and people pointing one way or the other, trying to 
offload blame, fundamentally mistakes the problem set at our southern border. Whoever's in charge of it needs to get their act together. We need to clean this up. It's possible to do. I heard, I heard Vice President Harris say, well, this is going to take time. No. No, it was right when you took over. Go yeah. back to those policies and our, our, our and go back to those policies and our border will get back to where we need it to be again. So yeah, from energy to Israel to the border, man, uh, that it's been a heck of a 115 days. Can't wait for the next 115. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, thank, <laughs> thank you so you much all. for being thank with you, us. Mr. Thank you, Secretary. What a difference of president. Good morning, everyone. Good so morning. Long. Absolutely.